This morning's Breakfast Bible Bites, we will conclude the commentary on Psalm 50, which taught us what God's desire for true worship is and is not. Reading Psalm 50 in verse 23, He who offers a sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me, and to him who orders his way aright, I shall show the salvation of our God. So, as we discussed back in verse 14 when we read about the Thanksgiving offering, what is the true way to salvation? It is to worship God by the pattern shown in Romans 12, 1 and 2, which reads, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship, And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect. When we are born anew, the wrath of God against all sin in our lives is appeased by the Christ's propitiation. He took upon himself the death penalty due us as a payment in full for the wages of our sin debt. The wrath of God is then appeased, and we are reconciled to the Father. God's Holy Spirit will take up residence in the very center of our being, and when he comes, he brings with him a new nature intended to replace our carnal nature that we inherited from our forefather Adam. This new nature has all of the godly attributes of Christ, just as they were created in the first spirit-filled human pre-lapsarian Adam, that is, before his rebellion. The human dilemma for all of the offspring of Adam, at least up until the time that we are born anew, is that we remain under the condemnation and penalty of death. What remains after we are born again is that we still have a soul, our mind, our intellect, and our will, that is flesh trained by the old nature and is very carnal. Over the course of our lives, it must be renewed by the power of the Holy Spirit and through his counsel with the word of God. Biblically speaking, this is the lifelong process of sanctification. And the Bible clearly says in Hebrews 12:14 that without sanctification, no man shall see the Lord. It is the sacrifice of our old nature and its propensity that aspires for the ungodly pleasures and ambitions of this world. The process of sanctification is learning to say no to sin as we mature in him. It will enable us to yield to the will of God and please our Heavenly Father with the sacrifice of thanksgiving that he regards. It is not a sin offering, nor is it a burnt offering. Rather, this offering of spiritual service is a sacrifice of thanksgiving. We are passionately appreciative that he has chosen to extricate us from the evil, from the past evil, bringing us to a new day when we will be made useful in sharing God's love and desire to redeem our friends and neighbors. We give thanks for the ability and assurance that when the penalty for sins are called due, we will be privileged to stand before his throne as our blood-washed forgiveness and sanctified blessings arise before him, and our names remain, they've remained in the Lamb's book of life. He is able to say to us, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Our names remain in the book of life only through the blood offering of our Lord Jesus and the work of his course correcting, mind renewing, indwelling Holy Spirit, who empowers us to submit to his divine guidance. As we read earlier, those who worship God must worship him in spirit and in truth. Paul, speaking in Philippians 13, 17 through 21, seems to offer an appropriate New Testament closing to this psalm of guidance. It reads, Join with others in following my example, brothers, and take note of those who live according to the pattern we gave you. For as I have often told you before, and now say again, even with tears, Many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their destiny is destruction. Their God is their stomach. Their glory is in their shame. Their mind is on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven. And we eagerly await a Savior from there, the Lord Jesus Christ, who by the power that enables him to bring everything under his control will transform our lowly bodies so that we will be like his glorious body. I trust that through this psalm, 
we have all gained a greater understanding of God's desire for true worship from our submitted souls.